So it turns out over the last month or so, I've come to the conclusion that I'm pretty much mildly dehydrated all the time, day in, day out. So what does that mean? Well, I've been doing some testing. I'm gonna introduce you to a device I've been playing with here in the lab, but also in my own training at home over the last month, getting some hydration status metrics and samples to be able to see what am I doing well and maybe what am I definitely now, in retrospect, doing not so well uh, in terms of my hydration, getting fluids into the body during pre-training, post-training, just in general. Because we know hydration, particularly for endurance performance, is a really, really big factor in making us or allowing us perform at our absolute best and not limiting or reducing any performance. We know in a lot of circumstances, if you're a couple of percent dehydrated, if you look at body weight metrics, like you're down a little bit in body mass and that's fluid loss, you can really have a significant negative impact on endurance performance, time to exhaustion, even things like jumping in a lab like this and doing a VO2 max test. But day to day, if you're dehydrated, it's gonna impact your ability to be able to get up for training sessions, recover between them, to ultimately get better, but also what can you output in those sessions? Are we underperforming? You head to race day and it's gonna cause all sorts of issues as well. So what I've done is I've been looking at my hydration status. And as I said, I've come to the conclusion that I'm pretty much mildly dehydrated all the time. Not a great place to be, even though I thought I was doing a lot right. I take in a reasonable amount of fluid. Most days I try to keep on top of that just day to day anyway. During my training, I'm pretty conscious of putting back in the fluids that I've lost, getting some electrolyte too, to be able to help retain and absorb some of that fluid. I thought I was ticking a lot of boxes. The numbers are saying otherwise. So that's what we're gonna break down here for you. Two part to this video. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about why is this sort of relevant and important for endurance athletes. I'm gonna introduce you to the device I've been using to be able to test some of these numbers. And then ultimately we're gonna talk about what am I gonna to do to try and fix it and rectify it. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little bit of time between videos on the channel, but um, for good reason. We've been quite busy last month with training, uh, everything that's been going on in the lab here as well. But most importantly, been working on a little bit of a case study of myself that I'm gonna be sharing here around my hydration status. As you heard in the introduction, hydration's really, really important. We're gonna cover that off first, and then I'll get into what I've been testing, this new device, some numbers, uh, etc. So, hydration for an endurance athlete, absolutely critical. If there's three things that you really wanna nail uh, outside of just training well, etc., it's your sleep, nutrition, and hydration. The biggest three pillars of recovery I've talked about on the channel before, but something like hydration has a really, really significant impact on how we can then go train, obviously how we recover, but then how we perform as well. So I'm gonna throw up here, uh, this is a really great culmination of the main key factors. This is not an exclusive uh, list by any means, but it's pulled from an article that's up on the Gatorade Sports Science Institute website. Yes, it's sponsored by Gatorade, um, so, take what you will. Uh, most of this information on, on here has been really great for progressing the hydration um, uh, side of things and getting some information out there around dehydration, hydration. What this is, it represents is a really great summary of the key points. When we are a bit dehydrated, and this is obviously exercise induced specifically, but it applies to if you're just dehydrated day to day, which I have actually worked out, I am a little bit, we'll look at that later, is some of the key parts of our physiology that can then impact in a negative way our overall performance, in particular our endurance performance. And that's what we're gonna hone in on is endurance specific uh, impact. So if we look at some of the classic ones, if we don't have enough fluid in our system, what is one of the main things that is gonna be impacted? Well, our blood. So our blood is largely made up of fluid and specifically our plasma volume um, or the, the watery part of our blood is largely made up of water. We don't have enough of that, uh, enough fluid in our system. It means we lose plasma volume. What does that do? Well, it increases the viscosity of the blood or what we call thickness. So blood's harder to move. Thicker blood moves a lot slower, not as good. That's gonna have some impact on our cardiovascular function, that CV function in the, the graph that you can see. Why does that impact? Well, thicker blood and less of it total is harder to pump and we can't pump as much as frequently. So things like our stroke volume, how much blood we can pump out of the heart per beat is going to reduce. What does that mean? Well, that, if we keep at the same heart rate or beats per minute, our total output, our cardiac output, how much blood's pumped out of the heart and around the system per minute is gonna to have to reduce. So our only real option to maintain exercise intensity in that circumstance is by increasing our heart rate. And this is why when you're dehydrated, you'll see heart rate start to rise and rise and rise. This then feeds into some other places. 
an impact on our movement of blood around the system is going to have an impact on things like body temperature. Now, our, our blood is one of our main ways that we can circulate temperature to the outside of the body and release it through, through our cooling processes, get it up to the surface of the skin to help radiate heat away. It's why we go a bit red in the face when you warm up, is that process. But if we don't have enough blood volume, and in particular plasma volume, blood moving slower, we're working harder for it, we might not have as much to be able to distribute away from the working muscles to be able to get the temperature out. So core body temperature might rise as a result. Or if we do split our focus and still prioritize a bit of that cooling aspect, we send blood to the skin and away from muscles a little bit, it's gonna impact our ability to actually generate work in the first place. So intensity is gonna drop hand in hand. They're basically gonna end up with the same result. Performance is impacted in a negative way. Couple of the other things, things like increasing thirst. When you don't have much fluid in the system, your body wants to get it in. So we're gonna feel thirsty, which can be a bit of an annoying process, a bit stressful, particularly if you don't have as much fluid ready. If you're out in an Ironman, you have, you've gotten through all your fluid and you're waiting for that next aid station. It can be a bit stressful because you'll be feeling the impact of it. You'll be feeling a bit under the pump. It's gonna decrease things like mood. Uh, a couple of those factors are gonna feed into things like rating of perceived exertion. If heart rate's higher, our mood's down a little bit, so we're not feeling as good about ourselves and we're thirsty, you're gonna feel like things are a lot harder than what they should be. So instead of a four out of 10 easy zone two run, it might now be a five or a six out of 10. We're working way harder than we need to actually objectively by measuring it, but also our perception and feel. It's gonna mean that's putting a higher strain in our system overall. All factors that come into it, things like an increase in plasma osmolality, changing the fluid balance between fluid and electrolyte, in, in a suboptimal way. Um, we wanna try and keep those in balance as best we can. Changing that and increasing that osmolality is gonna be representative of that dehydration. And this is one of our markers. And I'm, I'm gonna come back to this point um, through our testing device, because this is kind of what we're measuring in a bit of a uh, side entered way, if you like, or a roundabout way. We're measuring an osmolality to be able to understand hydration status. Um, so that's a, a really interesting one when that, that number rises, that osmolality rises it's a clearer sign that we're, we're not optimally hydrated or we might be coming dehydrated or actually quite significantly dehydrated as well. And the final one that probably is an interesting one for most of you, we commonly think about fluids and heart rates and things like that. Dehydration can lead to an increase in muscle glycogen use as well. That's another component that we can sometimes see. What does that mean? Well, we're gonna burn through our carbs a bit quicker. We're gonna, we're gonna be able to run out of fuel a lot sooner, which from an endurance athlete's perspective, that can be pretty problematic as I'm sure most of you are aware. So overall, what do we have with all these factors combined in any or all sorts of combinations of these? We get impaired endurance performance. Things aren't gonna go as well for us. Understanding our hydration status is actually something really, really important and understanding when we're adequately hydrated, maybe a bit down, we can start to open up some opportunities to release that handbrake on our performance and actually start to improve more effectively or, or realize the improvements that might already be there. And I think this is probably an interesting one from my perspective is looking at the trends in the data by doing some testing. I discovered that I'm sort of mildly dehydrated kind of all the time, day in, day out, training days, non-training days, um, post-training, pre-training, bunch of different things. And as much as I feel pretty good most of the time, this time of year, I know I'm always gonna be a bit, a bit run down. I've had a pretty long sort of training season, if you like, or year. I know I'm just sort of hanging on a little bit, waiting for a bit of off season. I, I'm probably overdue for a bit of a break, but even then I feel pretty good day to day. There hasn't been anything clear to say, gee, I'm really under the pump and I'm struggling. But at the same time, there hasn't been anything really clear to say, gee, I'm really over performing or I'm performing really, really well. Um, it's kind of been this sort of mediocre in between and there's a bit of a blurred line around what might be going on. So looking at a hydration status, it's been really interesting to understand what I thought was pretty good. I thought I was ticking a lot of boxes. Apparently, I'm not quite hitting the mark uh, in terms of fluid intake, in terms of electrolyte intake, etc. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna look at how have I been measuring this and what does this all mean? So I've got a device in front of me here. They're lab grade devices, if you like. Um, really simple to use. Anyone could absolutely get one. If you had the money to do it, you might be interested of information that can come from this, if it was a smaller device, cheaper um, and more accessible to athletes, I'd almost be arguing this is be one of my number one recommendations for people to get, particularly endurance athletes. Ultimately, what is it doing? It's assessing hydration status. There is the ability to be able to measure your sodium concentration or sodium loss. So we've been able to do that previously here in the lab. Um, 
using a, a patch, squeezing it out, analyzing that sample for the sodium concentration. So to get some ideas around hydration strategy, we're not gonna to focus too much on that today, maybe in a future video. What we are gonna focus on is taking an actual measurement. So we're gonna show you exactly what I've been doing over the last month. Um, you'll notice in the data when I put it up, I've been taking these samples quite sporadically. Um, I'm reading off the screen here, my last uh, month's worth of samples, 5.41 p.m., 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 3.30, 11.14. I've been trying to catch myself off guard um, a little bit just so I can get a really accurate indication of what I've been, what I've been doing in general hydration wise. Um, not trying to change my habits because I'm taking a test. I'm sort of getting to a random point in the day and I haven't taken it every day, every other day kind of scenario. Get to a random point in the day and go, oh yeah, I've got this cool device. Maybe I'll take a sample and see where I'm at. And it's come out mildly dehydrated. So we're gonna take one now and I'm not super confident I'm gonna get a good score today. I reckon I'm probably gonna be a bit uh, down as well. So the take sample, we turn it on. It's got little strips in it similar to blood lactate strips. So I'm waiting for this one to load. It says insert test strip. Um, I've got it hooked up to my iPad here. So I'll show you the, the score when it pops up. Now we take a saliva sample. So I mentioned the term plasma osmolality before. So looking at fluid balance within the system. We're using a saliva osmolality, so the balance there, to be able to understand that hydration status. So if I have a lower number, um, that means I'm going to be more appropriately hydrated or an indicator of hydra uh, greater hydration. If I have a higher number, like 100 plus, etc., that's going to indicate I'm probably a little bit low. So idea is we want as low a number as possible is the optimal, higher number, not so good. We're going to take a sample and see. So how we take this, I'm going to clear my mouth of all the saliva I've got. You need to wait about five minutes between taking uh, any fluids uh, in before you take this, just so you don't smash a bunch of fluid in. It gives an, uh, an impacted uh, or influenced result. So clear all saliva, create a new saliva sample, and I'm going to dab this on my tongue, and we're going to get a reading pretty quickly. So here we go. So it's pretty quick. Um, it's gonna pop up on the screen in a moment. Like I said, I'm not super confident. I know I'm probably down a bit today, just gut feel and having tested this over a while, I know I'm gonna be a bit low. 114, moderately or mildly dehydrated. So you can see that on the screen there, not ideal, um, but it fits the trend of where I've been at and it fits my feel for it. And what this has been useful is in some of these days where I felt, yeah, you know what? I reckon I've nailed it here. I've got really good hydration status. Um, I've taken in plenty of fluid. I'm feeling really good. And it's come back mildly dehydrated. A bit of an indicator. Maybe I wasn't retaining the fluid too well. Now, a few things that I'm going to be really implementing to fix is over the last month, I haven't really been conscious, mainly because I wanted to get some really accurate, just general readings on taking specific amounts or tracking my fluid intake, so to speak. I've been drinking kind of when I've been thirsty, day to day trying to get some fluid in during training, post training, um, and haven't really been monitoring exact amounts, I'm going to in the next little bit. And something that I think is a really simple one for me to do and reflecting back, I probably haven't nailed is just my day to day. We all know during training, post training, etc., we need to take fluids in, that's all fine. Generally speaking, I feel like I do a good job of that and most athletes probably do. It's the day to day stuff I reckon I struggle with and probably a lot of you might struggle with as well. As a general rule, this is a very general rule and it will change a bit individual wise, but roughly it's sort of recommended about 30 to 35 milliliters of fluid per kilogram of body weight per day. I'm about 70, 71 kilos. That's gonna be roughly somewhere between two to two and a half liters of fluid, right? Rough calculation. Um, that's how much fluid I need to be taking in day in, day out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday before I even get to training. And I think that's probably the one I miss most on. I'd probably get to maybe one and a half, 1.8, but I really need to be getting to two to two and a half liters, then adding what I'm taking during training, post-training as well. Um, so on some days, here's a bit of a, a numbers breakdown I was thinking through before. On a day where I have a one hour solid interval training session, like a right lose in one hour, let's say I lost 1.2 liters. So if I know I need to be taking in We'll say the high, uh, the, the lower end actually, we'll go the lower end. So two liters per day is what I need to be taking in just day to day. I then lose 1.2 in sweat as a result of a high intensity interval session. So I need to at least put that 1.2 back. 
makes sense, right? So I've taken in two. I've lost another 1.2 on top of it. So I need to put that back in. We're at 3.2 liters for the day. However, not all of our fluid loss is just sweat. Throughout the day, I'm going to be going to the toilet as well. So I'm going to be losing fluid through that process also. So to combat that fluid loss from sweat and going to the toilet, I probably actually need to put 1.6 times back in what I've lost. So that could mean that add that all up together, I might be taking four, four and a bit liters on just a typical one hour high intensity interval training day based on how much fluid I'm actually losing. And this is why tracking some of these numbers, not just your hydration status through a device like this, but even as simple as, okay, I know how much I need to get in before training. Weigh yourself on the scales before your session, weigh yourself afterwards, have a look at how much you've lost, try and replace about one and a half times that over the next few hours. You add that all up. Yeah, it could be as four, four and a half liters. Some big training days, you might find you need to take a little bit more than that. And in hot conditions, you might need to take a little bit more. Apart from anything, the thing you have to be careful with is just drinking plain water in these exercise examples. This is not necessarily the day-to-day stuff, but mainly the exercise examples is that we can overhydrate ourselves and that becomes quite a dangerous process. It's actually medically more dangerous to overhydrate than underhydrate, which seems a bit strange, but where I think I'm probably going a bit wrong is I could probably be a bit, bit better day to day, take a bit more fluid in general, but then also top up a bit more electrolyte in some of those harder sessions or particularly on hot sessions as well. But yeah, just a really interesting trend over time and really eye opening to see that um, day in, day out over the last month, and it hasn't been excessively hot all the time, few days here and there, I'm mildly dehydrated as a result. And that's definitely going to be having, over the long run, an impact on how well I perform, how well I train, how well I recover, um, and everything in between. So hopefully you got a bit of insight out of and around what I've been doing over the last month in terms of tracking some numbers and looking at some hydration status metrics. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below um, if this is a new topic of interest of you. This has really been a really big uh, eye-opener for how I might be able to find an extra couple of percent here and there performance-wise and and ultimately just health-wise as well. So hopefully you got plenty out of it. I know I've been away from the channel the last little bit. Good to be back, good to be making videos, good to be checking in on some metrics and training as well. As always, leave your comments and thoughts down below. Thanks again for all the support on the channel. For those who have subscribed, if you haven't, click that big red button down below. I'm gonna leave it there for today. I really need to get some fluids in because I can feel I'm getting thirsty up by the second. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. I need more.